and business, as I say, has definitely picked up. I'm John Renton with my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Japan Cup 2021 Night 7 and 8 events. Really quickly, the Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday shows will be on one review of Thursday afternoon slash evening, and then the semifinals and finals will either be separate reviews, or they will be up in one review Sunday morning. But I'm really excited, and I'm really thankful that after the first round, which had its moments and certainly wasn't bad, there were a few matches where I was like, eh, that was kind of just there, like the great Okan. Oh, dear. Thank God he's out of the goddamn tournament. He should have never been in the first place, or he at least should have been a first-round exit. But anyway... These tournament matches in particular, two that will end up on my favorite matches of the year list because they were really terrific. They made these two shows a lot better than some of the, you know, earlier events. That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So we start off night seven with Yoshihashi, Yano, and Ishii versus Finley, Yota Suji, and Gabriel Kidd. And Gabriel Kidd goes right at Ishii because he figures, why have a long career? I'm just going to go at a guy that's basically like going at a tank. Um, Yano does some comedy with Yota, but does some good wrestling as well. Ishii's chops have to hurt. They really have to hurt. We get Finley and Yoshihashi hyping up their cup match coming up, and then, uh, Kid and Yoshihashi close it, and Butterfly Lock taps him, so there we go. The United Empire, Will Ospreay, Jeff Cobb, and the Great Okan. Just saying right now, the Great Okan may end up being my least favorite wrestler of the year, or at least up there. It's not even that he's not a good athlete. I just hate the goddamn gimmick so much. They took on Zack Sabre Jr., Taichi, and Doki. This was to hype up Will Ospreay versus Zack Sabre Jr. on the next night. Um, who's going to out heal who? That would be asked during a few of these matches, but in particular this one, and then one on night eight. So it wasn't that bad. Um, choke slam on Doki, one, two, three. There we go. And then Zack Sabre Jr. gets an armbar briefly on Will Ospreay, and it's just like, oh, come on, guys, come on. Zack Sabre Jr., He's so goddamn good. He's so fun to watch. Even in matches like this, he makes it look so easy. Bushi, Naito, and Sonata uh, took on Okada, Sho, and Nagata. So it was a hype up Sonata and Nagata, which uh, ended up being a pretty good match. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. <clears throat> Well-paced. Nagata's kicks just really have to hurt. I mean, it, even at in his early 50s, uh, just cannon fire kicks. Uh, Sonata and Joe close it, and Skull and taps out Show. There we go. That's it right there. It's certainly not bad uh, at all. I mean, anytime you get Chaos and LIJ involved, it's usually a pretty good, at least well-paced six-man, even if you've seen a lot of spots before. And then we get Bullet Club. Jay White, Bad Luck Folly, Evil with Gato and Dick Togo, because, of course, Dick has to insert himself everywhere, whether he wants to be inserted or not. He's going to find a way to insert himself anywhere. So they took on Tanahashi, Juice, and Hanare. The, us the usual Bullet Club antics, that is. Um, they really should push Hanare. Hopefully they do. Hopefully he gets a spot in the G1. Um, everything is evil to Hanare. One, two, three. After I say that, it is what it is. Cup match, Kenta versus Suzuki. And Kenta is taking this so seriously, he has a Japanese newspaper and he's reading it while Suzuki makes his entrance and he keeps reading it and Suzuki gets mad. You never want to make Suzuki mad even though Kenta really didn't care. He thought he was beneath him. He's like, you're past your prime. I'm going to beat you. I don't care. I can beat you in my sleep. And then Suzuki gets a newspaper. A lot of this was newspaper based. It was like, you know, one of them was going to bust out the Clark Kent disguise at some point. Which one was going to be Lois Lane? Miho or uh, Peter, you know, could have been there and been Lois Lane, and that could have conjured up other images. Anyway, pretty good stuff. Uh, so many goddamn palm strikes and kicks, and good lord, these guys beat the hell out of each other. I can't say this was my favorite match. It was really good, but I do want to say right now that I think Suzuki is going to retire by no later than Wrestle Kingdom in 2023. He is still in great shape, but the way he takes some of these bumps in the way... Father Time is undefeated. Father Time is tapping on his shoulder. And he will have to turn around eventually and just say, you know, it's time to go. And that happens with everybody, as even somebody as tough as Suzuki. Uh, but eventually, GTS, one, two, three. I mean, he kind of hit the GTS out of nowhere. GTS out of nowhere, but he just kind of hit that, and it was what it was. It wasn't bad. It was just a bit strange. But it, but it was a good match, and Kenta advanced, as you would expect. And then uh, Shingo versus Goto. Yes, all this in my veins now. Just hook it to my veins. This was great. This was great shit. I knew I was going to love it within the first few minutes. But I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to be totally wrong. Maybe it's going to start good and it's going to kind of slow down. No, these guys just beat the hell out of each other. Shingo was great. And Shingo is not necessarily a young man. He's had a hell of a career, I believe, in Dragon Gate. And he came over to New Japan a few years ago. And he's still in really good shape, but, I mean, he's had a lengthy career already, and Goto's had a lengthy career. 
These two, they turned back the clock. It was like they were 10 years younger. They were just beating the hell out of each other. Clotheslines, kicks, the suplexes. My God, these guys beat each other up. Shingo may end up being my favorite wrestler of the year. I mean, he's been on my list, I mean, for what it's worth from a fan the last couple of years. It is hard not to enjoy what Shingo does. He just strikes different, he hits different, and Goto, absolutely great in the ring as well. Um, we get a reverse GTR for two. We get headbutt. I did, I really wish they'd stop the headbutts. I mean, it is what it is, but I really wish they'd stop the headbutts. Uh, pumping bomber, we get more reversals. We get a Sh Shingo hitting a GTR off the ropes. Hits a pumping bomber, and then last of the dragons, one, two, three. And I believe the, uh, the commentary said Sugoi, which means great, awesome. And yeah, Sugoi, definitely. Definitely a lot of Sugoi. It really just great. It was so fucking one of my favorite matches of the year. By far an incredible way to cap off night seven. And then we get to night eight. This will be quick because pretty much it's just copy and paste from the other undercard. And I get it. It's a way to hype up the cup matches and you've got to give these guys something to do. Yoshihashi Yano and Ishii versus Finley, Yota and Yuya. Basically the same thing, you know, just uh, swap Gabriel Kidd uh, and put Yuya in there. Uh, Yuya angers Ishii. Why you would do that, I don't know. Huge lariat from Ishii pins Yotasuji for the finish. One, two, three. Kenta, Fale, and Chase versus Suzuki, Taichi, and Doki. Man, you're including Fale and Chase in the same match. It is like you are trying to bore me to tears. Fale is legit scary as far as like just physically looking at him. And Chase is fine in the ring. He just is the human equivalent of NyQuil. He just makes me want to go to sleep. Um, who could outheal who? Fale is washed. Kenta and Suzuki go at more, and then Package Pile Driver pins Doki 1, 2, 3. They couldn't have even pinned Chase. Does it really matter if Chase gets pinned? Oh, he's got the Texas Heavyweight Championship, which meant something back in the 80s. Does it mean anything now? No, it really doesn't. Sorry. I love Texas wrestling, at least like some of the stuff I've seen of it, but it doesn't mean anything to me. If it means something to you guys, like if it's you know, this great lineage, if you're happy that Chase has the championship, cool. I just, it, we, I know it's not like a recognized thing in New Japan. It's just Chase being a jackass and being a heel, but cool, whatever. It is what it is. It's like 24-7 championship. It doesn't mean anything. Anyway, um, LIJ minus Sonata took on Okada, Sho, and Goto. And it's the usual. The pace is good, as you would expect. And Goto and Shingo going at it again. Please, yes, again, all this in my veins. Naito and Okada really need time off. They really do. I really wish they would get some level of surgery or just take time off after this until the stadium shows. If they can rest and they can go through to Wrestle Kingdom and they get surgery after that, fine. But Okada's got two slip discs in his back. That's brutal. Uh, Sho and Bushi close it out and shock arrow to Bushi. One, two, three. Certainly not bad. Jay, Evil, and Yujiro with Gato and Dick inserting himself once again. For Satanahashi, Hanare, and Juice, my god, the repetition from Bullet Club. And the repetition from me, basically saying I don't care for Bullet Club, the t-shirt brand that it is. Um, high Fly Flow pins Yujiro. Good. So, Sonata and Nagata had a New Japan Cup match, second round. Really good stuff. Nagata, I think this is going to be one of the last hurrahs he has, even though he is still really good. I'm not trying to write people off because of age. I just, you can tell when it's somebody's time, and I think Nagata knows it's going to be his time soon. But he does wrestle still really well. He has changed up his offense and he can move well for being his, you know, early 50s. And having wrestled all the way to the point where he was wrestling in WCW, for God's sakes. That's a long time. I mean, same with Tenzon, but Nagata can actually move. So, it was good and expected. Sonata, uh, you know, was more youthful. He used a lot of agility. Nagata, you know, trapped him with some good kicks and a nice cross face. And then we eventually get Skull in for days, and then we get a uh, Muda Moonsault, one, two, three. Sonata gets the victory. No shock. It was, I don't want to say it was anticlimactic, but it kind of was. It, it just, it was like, oh, and he hit it, and that's it. I mean, granted, it, it was what it was. We probably needed more time for the very impactful and very tremendous Will Ospreay versus Zack Sabre Jr. So for Shingo and Goto, Will Ospreay and Zack Sabre Jr., Two of my favorite matches of the year, easily. It is impossible to not watch a Zack, or you can't watch a Zack Sabre Jr. match, really, and just not enjoy at least, you know, most of it on some level. The guy's too good, too smooth. And yes, Will Ospreay has done a lot of stupid shit before. Um, in the ring, though, I can't, you can't deny what Will Ospreay is. He is really good. Now, yes, my opinion has soured on him. It has soured on a lot of people. It ain't just him. 
But I can't deny it, this is a really good match. And it's going to end up being on my favorite match. This, I like this one more than Okada and Osprey, and I will explain why. It didn't go quite as long, and you didn't have B uh, involved in there. Because she didn't need to be there. Because B Priestley really doesn't need to be anywhere near a New Japan ring. But this is great shit. I mean, I could watch Zack Sabre Jr. wrestle for I could watch a series of matches that he's done and not get bored. The strikes got laid in. We got some... Really good work you know, from both these guys. The Clash of Styles worked here because they told a good story. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. got hit with the Oz Cutter, and then Will's nose got busted open, dear, and it was gushing. That was something fear. That was brutal. Uh, we got Zack Driver for two, very close two count. Armbar off the top by Zack. That was beautiful. And then we get the elbow to the back of the head, and eventually Stormbreaker, one, two, three, and that's it. Will Ospreay gets the victory. I hope he didn't actually have a broken nose, because that looked really goddamn brutal. That was pretty damn intense. But yeah, two of my favorite matches of the year taking place on Night 7 and Night 8 uh, to get really, really good stuff. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Retlin. I'll see you soon.